morning, squad. Welcome back to Mad Mizzy Sports Morning Show, the number one spot for everything sports talk, sports news, sports debate in the morning. Hope y'all had a great weekend. Came to y'all yesterday with a Sunday special to recap the beatdown of my Michigan Wolverines on the Ohio State Buckeyes in the horseshoe. But we got a beautiful rundown today. Of course, we got to touch on Sunday football. We got to touch off touch on the walk-off wins of the Chargers, Jags, Raiders, what was more impressive, what was more devastating. Then we're going to speak on is Zach Wilson done with the huge performance of Mike White yesterday, the return of Deshaun Watson, breakdown Monday night football, and who's the beast in the East in the NBA, the Bucks or the Celtics. Let's get right into it, gang gang. So let's start off yesterday recapping the wild finishes that we had. We had the Chargers winning over the Cardinals, going for two for the win. Had the Jags winning over the Ravens, going for two, going for the win. Then we had the Raiders with a walk-off huge, what, 87, 85, 75-yard run from, from Josh Jacobs to beat the Seattle Seahawks 40-34. to Sheesh, which win was more impressive and which win was more devastating? Uh, to me, I got to say the Jacksonville Jaguars one was more impressive because when I looked at the game, the Ravens had the ball late. They were driving down the field, scored the touchdown, put a put all the pressure on the Jacksonville Jaguars to have to score a touchdown just to extend the game. You get what I'm saying? So to me, I looked at it. I thought the Jags didn't really have a shot once they got the ball back. I think they had like a minute and a half back. But to watch Trevor Lawrence drive down the field, young guy, mature like that against uh, one of the top premier quarterbacks in the league and Lamar Jackson then not only that to cap it off with a touchdown and to cap it off with a two-point conversion to get the win in at home against the Baltimore Ravens so I think that's going to bode well for the Jacksonville Jaguars and their confidence as they move forward throughout the rest of their season and as they try to build with this very young team moving on no the mess the most devastating loss to me is the seattle seahawks losing to the las vegas raiders you know they're in a tight race in that nfc west trying to keep pace with my san francisco 49ers then you think about you got the the washington commanders you got the dallas cowboys you got the new york giants you got a few teams in that nfc that's on the heels for that last wild card spot so then you think the the tampa bay bucks just lost you still got the falcons hanging around so that was a devastating loss to me from the seattle seahawks when they should have had it in the bag and should have kept pace and kept ahead of the rest of the pack of the wild card um team so yeah to me the seattle seahawks giving up that huge run at the end of the game to the raiders and a loss that they should have in a, in a game that they should have won was the most devastating loss of those close games let's move on though to the new york jets is zach wilson done mike white came out there led the bears to a 31 to 10 win over the chicago bears in new york going 22 for 28 three touchdowns no interceptions to me zach wilson isn't done overall but he might be done in new york if mike white continues to play this way because he's young that's the thing when i came and i talked about this debate i came and i talked about joe flacco versus zach wilson it was Mike White versus Zach Wilson. And Mike White came out there, had three touchdowns, no interceptions. And Wilson on the season only has four touchdowns. I don't see how you come back and you give him the job. Even if Mike White slips up or doesn't do this or doesn't do that. From what, the, uh, what people have been leaking out of the organization, Mike White has been looking better in practice, in training camp, in every situation. He's just been looking better. And then he comes out there and he performs that way? Hey, listen, it's going to be hard to go back to Zach Wilson after that performance from Mike White, but I'm not going to say that Zach Wilson is done as a New York, as as a quarterback in the NFL. He's just probably done as a New York judge. Then he, he didn't even suit up. I'm like, come on, my man ain't even going to be the backup. You're not hurt. Like, come on, bro. Go out there and, and, and ball. You dig what I'm saying? We got the return of Deshaun Watson coming up this Sunday in Houston. What's my expectations? You got the Cleveland Browns at the Houston Texans and the huge return of Deshaun Watson this year. To me, I'm expecting Deshaun Watson to come out there, be rusty, have to knock some rust off, not look like his normal self. He might not have a good game at all. He'll show flashes of why he's Deshaun Watson and why they paid him all that guaranteed money. But I expect him to come out there, look very, very rusty, have to look not look like the Deshaun Watson that we remember the last time he was out there on the field. You think about he was out all last year, been out most of this year, hasn't been in the heat of the game. I don't even know what's going I mean, the Browns got the run game and all that, but their offensive line isn't too good as far as pass protection goes. You got wide receivers and weapons all over the places, but I, 
I don't know. Then you had what he, I think he started practicing around week nine or something like that. I, I don't know, but I'm not expecting too much out of Deshaun Watson in his first game back against the Houston Texans, especially having those emotions return and all that. I'm not expecting a huge game from Deshaun Watson, but it's good to see you getting back on the field, good brother. Hope you stay out of trouble as well. Let's move on, though. What are we going to move on to? Before we move on to breaking down Monday Night Football of the Steelers at the Indianapolis Colts, let's touch on who's the beast in the East out of the Bucks and the Celtics. To me, I'm going to have to go with, right now, the Milwaukee Bucks. And it's splitting hairs. It's really splitting hairs. They are the two best teams in the NBA right now when you look at it. But to me, what's the difference is the Bucks still aren't at full health yet. Once they get Chris Middleton back, then we can see. Because that's how they... They, they formulated their championship formula of Giannis dominating 46 minutes of the game and then Chris Middleton closing the last two minutes because he has a way better jump shot. To me, you you look at it as superstar for superstar on each team. Giannis Antetokounmpo, Drew Holiday, Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, Marcus Smart, just name after name. But to me, like I said, I'm going to go with the Milwaukee Bucks. I think they have a little bit more extra motivation to rebound from what they probably figured was a disappointing end to their season last year and not being able to close out the Boston Celtics in six in Milwaukee and then losing in seven in Boston. So I think the Milwaukee Bucks have a little bit more extra motivation to win it all this year. So when it comes to the beast in the East, I'm gonna go with the Milwaukee Bucks and I think Giannis Antetokounmpo is the best player in the NBA right now. Now let's move on to Monday Night Football. We have a boring matchup tonight. We have the Pittsburgh Steelers at the Indianapolis Colts. Neither of these teams are going to make the playoffs, especially being in that stacked AFC. But we have been seeing positive signs out of the Indianapolis Colts since the hiring of Jeff Saturday. So to me, I'm seeing a low scoring game. I think the Colts feel different, a lot different with Jeff Saturday and then implementing Matt Ryan back into the starting lineup and not going out there with Sam Ellinger and looking like they just giving up on the season. You've seen some flashes out of Kenny Pickett out of the Pittsburgh Steelers, but the Pittsburgh Steelers have to get back to running the ball. I haven't heard Najee Harris' name since he got drafted, B. Hey, since he got drafted, so they got to open up some lanes. I don't know. They need to hire the San Francisco 49ers run coordinator, the Miami Dolphins run coordinator, the Atlanta Falcons, somebody. They need to get that run game going in Pittsburgh. So to me, that's going to be the difference in the game is that the Indianapolis Colts can control the line of scrimmage offensively and defensively. They'll control the game, the clock management with Jonathan Taylor. I see the big game from Jonathan Taylor. I see the 20 to 10 win from the Indianapolis Colts because, like I said, it's going to be too much of Kenny Pickett just dropping back and throwing the ball. They can't run. They can't run the ball in Pittsburgh. So that's the huge issue. And the Colts can lean on that run game with Jonathan Taylor and then having that veteran quarterback playing pretty well of lately, Matt Ryan. So, yeah, I'm going to go with the Indianapolis Colts in this game, 20 to 10, and they're at home. Yeah, give me the Colts. Give me the Colts. Let me know what y'all think, though. Walk off Sunday, though. Who had the most impressive win yesterday out of the Chargers over the Cards, Jags over the Ravens, Raiders over the Seahawks? And who had the most devastating loss out of those three games? Then we're going to speak on is Zach Wilson done, at least as a New York Jet or in the NFL overall? Touch on that. Deshaun Watson, what do y'all expect in his return to Houston, Texas this Sunday? Then speaking on who is the real beast in the East in the NBA? The Milwaukee Bucks or the Boston Celtics? And who do y'all have tonight? What's the key matchup in tonight's Monday Night Football game of the Pittsburgh Steelers at the Indianapolis Colts? Mad Mizzy Sports Morning Show. Like, comment, share, subscribe, listen, alert. Mizzy World Entertainment. Gang.